It's the Bobcat Club podcast. I'm your host, Carl Schoening, and today we are joined by women's golf head coach for Texas State, Par Nielsen. Par, thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. So let's start off with you. You are a first-year coach here at Texas State that obviously had their first season cut short with women's golf being a uh, primarily spring sport, even though you have a fall schedule. Um, can we just kind of touch on how you got to Texas State? You were actually a professional at first uh, before you got into coaching. So what was the pro style life like? Uh, for me, it was mostly mini tours and Q schools and, and those kinds of things. So uh, professional golf life at that level, it's, it's, it's really tough. There's, there's a lot of good players that, that want to uh, compete and uh, try to make it onto the bigger tours. So it's, it's very, very competitive. Yeah, I, you obviously see the ones that they show at the Masters and the major tournaments. However, it's just crazy how you do have the NCAA amateurs that even compete in some of those professional tournaments. And man, I, I, uh, I know that that's just as much of a grind to play professionally, but then you proceeded to uh, get into coaching and uh, that took you to the University of Denver uh, with the Pioneers. So what was that transition like from going from a pro to a coach? It was, uh... It was a lot of fun. That, that's why I started coaching because I'm, I'm very, very competitive. Um, I obviously played college sports and then uh, pro sports and I, I wanted to continue to, to compete. So uh, the job in Denver came open and um, I started there. I was coaching men's golf there for three years and I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Then next up, you went to Oklahoma State, where uh, you and the Cowgirls had a pretty good run of success making uh, regionals appearances. What was that like up just uh, the state north of us? It was good. I, I played my college golf at, at Oklahoma State. I, I was a two-time All-American there. And uh, so it was, it was cool to, to come back to, to my alma mater and, and coach there. And uh, we had some good teams. We... We were ranked in the top 15 most of the years. We won a big club championship. So it was, it was good to uh, compete uh, at such a high level. And then you come here to Texas State, you take all that experience with you to this uh, women's golf team. And uh, you, know, you inherited a, a pretty diverse uh, group of girls. Can we maybe touch on that for a moment? How uh, you come in and you're dealing with people from the other side of the world, but I understand that that's maybe something a lot more common in golf than people think. Yes, for sure. Uh, women's golf is a very international sport. And if you look around in, in college uh, golf, there are a lot of international players on, on many of the teams. So uh, it's, it's a very global sport. The standard is very high around the world. So, um, yeah, so I, I recruit uh, all over the world, just trying to find whoever is the best fit in, in my team here at Texas State. So uh, we, we're going to continue to be a pretty international team. How has recruiting gone over this last month or so when everything shuts down from you maybe being able to see someone in person with a round of golf or just invite them to the school to get a tour? It's changed for sure. I think all coaches are adjusting to, to, to this new world that we're basically living in. And uh, our recruiting was mostly done actually before this uh, virus started. So we, we signed two players last fall and we signed another three players this spring. So we have a big class coming in. Uh, but we had um, the last verbal commitment we had was um, in March. So uh, we, we were done with most of the recruiting for sure for 2020 and we don't have that many spots for 2021. So it didn't really affect recruiting that much. Uh, we keep in touch with all, all of our recruits through, uh, through video, through phone calls, through text. So it, it's, it's working pretty well. It's just like we just have to adjust to it like, like everybody else. 
Now, women's golf is something that I'm pretty interested in learning more about because obviously you understand the basics of the sport of golf, but it's an individual sport as well as a team sport at the same time. So uh, can you maybe walk us through what it's like typical academic year where you have the fall and then I think the main spring schedule and then individuals yeah. and teams are being rated at the same time. That's kind of where I get it, but you, you know a lot more than yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. No, so it, it, it golf is a little bit different than most sports. I really like that we both have a fall and the spring season. And I think it's really cool uh, that uh, golfers, uh, we have an opportunity to play as a team because normally it's a very individual sport and uh, college golf is, is kind of both. Most tournaments we play, we always play as a team, obviously, uh, but there is an individual tournament going on um, at the same time. So whoever has the least amount of strokes in each tournament, they, they, they win the individual title. And um, for the team portion, usually you count the four best scores out of five uh, during three rounds of stroke play. That's that's the the most common format we use. Yeah, and it's uh, going to be fun to see you guys. Have you gotten any golfing in uh, during this hiatus? Because I know that that's still social distancing. Golf courses haven't entirely closed down everywhere. I see some people uh, still taking some t their clubs out every now and again. Right. No, I actually haven't played. Um, my son Axel really likes to play all kinds of different sports. So we we usually play um, just in the backyard a little bit, some golf, some football, some basketball. So we we keep uh, we keep it moving that way. So last question is sort of uh, for you to take the stage. Is there anything you'd like to say to all the Bobcat fans out there? Uh, I just say stay stay safe, stay healthy. Um, I think it's important that we have some some patience right now and uh, just stay positive going through this. And I think it's going to be over and, and better here soon. All right. Well, we appreciate your time, Par, and we can't wait to see you back out on the links. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it.